Now we're going to use what we've been talking about to solve the problem of a double pendulum. So here we have one pendulum with, with length L1 and mass M1 on the end. And then to that pendulum we're attaching another pendulum with length L2 and mass M2. And as usual we're, we're pretending that these strings or these rods, they're rigid and they have no mass. So they're not curling up or twisting around or bouncing and there's no mass to worry about so we don't have to think about or the moment of inertia of these these rods so let's start out by thinking about how many degrees of freedom that this system has so we'll write s equals three because there are three dimensions times the number of particles or objects minus the number of equations of constraint so let's see we have two different pendulums, two, two pieces of mass, right? These two little point masses. So n is two in this case. So this term is six. And then m, let's think about our equations of constraint. So in three dimensions, we have x, y, and z, and we have an x1, x2, a y1, y2, and a z1, z2. So six total, so that's what this 3m is. But we're going to constrain this pendulum in this problem so that both of them remain in the xy plane. So the z components of these things don't change. So we can set them equal to something, and we might as well set them equal to 0. So I'll write z1 equals 0, and then z2 also equals 0. z2 also equals 0. So here are two equations of constraint. Now let's think about these other ones, right? We'll have one for L1 and one for L2, or the, each of these strings. So we know that if this is our origin, that, that M1, its positions X1 and Y1 will always lie on a circle, right? Because it's a fixed distance from a certain point. So we can write down the equation of a circle, L1 squared equals X1 squared plus Y1 squared. And then for this constraint here, this cord or rod or this thing attaching M1 and M2, we can write that the difference in the positions M1 and M2 lie on a circle. So let's write this as, so L2, L2 squared equals, and we'll have X2 minus X1. minus x1 squared <clears throat> plus y2 minus y1 squared y1 squared running out of room right these are added together all right so we have this circle with this distance here which is the difference between their x positions and this distance here with their distance and the difference in the y directions, so they're on this sort of circle here. These these two, the distance between these two masses is fixed, right? And that's what this equation says. So now, if we count our equations of constraint, we have four of them, right? These two saying that the motion is only in the y or or in the x y plane, and these two saying that this mass is a fixed distance from the origin and that the two masses are a fixed distance from each other. So there are four equations of constraint, six minus four. So we should have two degrees of freedom or two generalized coordinates. And since we see that these things are the equations of circles, it might not be a bad idea to choose polar coordinates and use theta, a theta one for this pendulum and a theta two for this pendulum as our generalized coordinates. So there's really not just one set way to find the best equations of constraint, or not equations of constraint, the generalized coordinates. You just have to kind of look at the symmetry of the system, look at the equations, and see what might work the best. And it might take more than one try. But here we're going to use theta one, which is this angle right here. And we'll also use theta two, which will be this angle right here, theta two. So let's write these things in terms of theta one and theta two. 
So let's start here and write x1 and y1 in terms of theta1. And they should only depend on theta1, right? Because this is just swinging back and forth. It's fixed at the origin, and, and it shouldn't matter what this thing is doing. So let's write x1, x1 equals, right? And this, this angle right here, right? So it'll be sine equals L cosine or L sine. L sine theta 1. Theta 1. I forgot my L1 here. Right, so let's check this by looking at our picture. So if we say that here's a right triangle, here's a right triangle, this x component here, right, the horizontal direction is, is the opposite of this angle, right? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so we can write this equation right here. Now, similarly for y, we can write that y1, y1 equals L1 times the cosine, cosine of theta1. Right, so if we have this right triangle, we can see that this is the adjacent side. And actually, there should be a negative sign here because, because we're counting up as positive and, and the pendulum is below is below the origin when when theta is zero. So we should have a negative sign here. So, and I forgot my other subscript as well. And now if we want equations for x2 and y2, let's think about those. x2 or x1 or x2. x2 equals, so let's think about what x2 is. x2, this is the origin. So it's this distance here. So, so x1, will matter and what x2 is, then it's also this distance right here. So this distance right here is just x1. So I'll rewrite it. Actually, maybe I'll just copy and paste this thing here. So this is just x1. Let's copy, paste, okay. So that's just x1 because we know it has this contribution. And then on top of that, it has this distance right here. And now if we think of this as a right triangle again, maybe I'll, I'll draw it here, right? We have this right triangle. We can say that again. This will be this will be the sine of the angle, right? So plus, and then what? It's l two, l two and theta two. So it's a little bit different. L two sine theta two, right? And I'm doing yellow. Sine theta two. Then in the same way, y two y2 equals, so in the same way, it has this distance here. It's, it's, it, it has, it's starting out at y1, right? So it goes down this far, and then from there, it goes down this other distance, right? So y1 here, right? So we'll add in y1, and I'll copy and paste again. Copy and paste. This goes down here, and I'll give myself just a little more room. And then we need to add this distance right here, right? So this will be the cosine of this angle times L2. So plus L2 cosine theta 2, cosine theta 2, right? So we've broken these down and we've, we've written our, our rectangular coordinates for each of these things in terms of just the lengths of these and the and the angles. So this this business here is is what we might call the transformation equations from rectangular coordinates to our generalized coordinates. And this is just a special case of this, but but from here we can just write out our Lagrangian in rectangular coordinates and then substitute these things in and see what the Lagrangian will turn into.